Welcome back to the Vatican Museum's guided tour. We are continuing from the gallery of maps. As we turn left, we see a huge painting. It shows a war scene when Austrian and the Polish army fought with the Ottoman Empire. In 1683, the Ottoman armies have surrounded Austria. We can see their tents on the left. On the right, in the distance are the church towers of Christian Vienna. Just when the city was about to fall, it was saved by the king Young Sobieski, who rides in at the center. He brings peace to the city and a rainbow breaks through the clouds. This painting was done by Polish artist in 1883 marking the 200th anniversary of the victory. Let's enter the next room, which also has huge paintings on the walls. It commemorates the doctrine of Immaculate Conception. This is the idea that Mary herself was conceived free from original sin. The room's frescoes show the scene of Mary and the history of the idea through ancient and medieval times. It was done by Francesco Podesti, who is considered one of the greatest Italian painters of early 19th century. The elaborate bookcase in the center displays copies of papal pronouncement that established the dogma. It begins with the painting on the wall at the back of the entrance. It illustrates the meeting of theologians to discuss the dogma. Next, on the largest of the wall's fresco depicts the moment when the doctrine became official in 1854. The church leaders and secular VIPs gather while the Pope raises to proclaim the new doctrine. Notice how the artist included a heavenly host watching from above and giving inspiration through a thin ray of light beam. The cycle concludes on the left wall with a painting of crowning of the image of Mary. A ceremony in the St Peter's Basilica which followed the proclamation Next we will enter the Raphael rooms We will pass along an outside walkway that overlooks a courtyard We are walking about a parking lot for some of the people who commute to work here and we are entering the apartment rooms of Pope Julius II in 1508 he hired Raphael to paint his apartment rooms which are now called as Stanze di Raffaello the Raphael rooms the first of the four rooms is the Constantine room the frescoes were designed by Raphael and actually painted by his students This first room shows the moment how Christianity took over the pagan Rome by unfolding the story in four scenes from the life of the first Christian emperor Constantine. Start with the left wall as you enter. In the year 312 on the eve of a big battle the general Constantine he is the guy in the gold with the crown. He is preparing his troops to take over Rome. Suddenly he looks up and sees a cross appearing in the sky. The vision came with a banner proclaiming the sign You shall conquer. Now turn right to the next wall with the biggest painting. It's the next day and Constantine's troops rage into battle. They carry their Roman eagle banners topped with Christian cross.
Now turn to the next wall on the right, where Constantine humbly disobeys and kneels before the Pope. He has become the new emperor by the grace of Christian God, so he is ready to be baptized. Historians debate whether that actually happened, but the Emperor Constantine legalized Christian religion for the Roman Empire. Now to the final wall, we see Constantine handing a document to the Pope, giving him the keys to the city. Constantine built the first Christian church in Rome, which is the old Saint Peter's Basilica. Let's continue on to the next Raphael room, the room of Heliodorus. This room is famous for its exponential quality of painting and splendid use of color. As you enter, face the painting on the entrance wall. It illustrates the biblical episode of Heliodorus. When the king of Syria sent Heliodorus to steal the treasure from the temple of Jerusalem, God sends an horseman and two youth to seize him and expel him from the temple. Raphael included the commissioning pontiff as himself witnessing the scene seated in the sedan chair carried on the shoulders of chair bearers turn right and we see the painting of mars of bolsena represents an event at bolsena in 1263 during the mass celebrated by peter of prague the blood of christ pours out from the host at the moment of consecration staining the white linen cloth this miracle gave rise to the feast of corpus christ and to the construction of cathedral of ovieto where the cloth is conserved rafael portrayed himself in the painting you can see a young man looking straight towards us he is none other than rafael on the next wall to the right is a meeting between leo the great and attila According to legend the miraculous appearance of Saint Peter and Saint Paul armed with swords during the meeting of Pope Leo the Great with Attila caused the king of Huns to renounce his invasion of Italy Now turn your attention to the next painting that's the liberation of Peter In the central scene we see Peter Jesus right hand man he is chained to the wall Then in the middle of the night an angel appears to rescue him while the guards are asleep on their feet to the right the angel leads him to safety past the sleeping guards finally on the left peter is long gone and the guards take help from their captain rafael makes this little play even more dramatic with his lightning design he used four different kinds of light there is a moonlit sky on the left The captain's torch adds a set of light and shadow. There is a brilliant radiance of the angel. And there is a natural light spilling through the museum's windows, dazzling the view. Finally, have a look at the ceiling. It illustrates four episodes of Old Testament. The pact between God and Noah, the sacrifice of Isaac, Moses before burning bush. and Jacob's ladder Enter the next room which contains Raphael's undisputed masterpiece the room of signatura the room takes its name as the highest court of holy see used to meet in this room around 16th century this was the first work executed by rafael in the vatican this room was pope's private office and library so rafael depicted scenes featuring knowledge and high minded debate the fresco on the entrance wall illustrates the school of athens a scene that celebrates the great thinkers of ancient greece rafael imagines a mythical university where scientists and philosophers from the ages are gathered together in the center are plato 
and Aristotle. Plato points up, indicating his philosophy, and Aristotle gestures down. Now find their master Socrates. He stands midway to the left in green. He is debating with his colleagues. In the lower left, a man sits and writes in the textbook. That's the mathematician Pythagoras. Now look to the lower right. A bold man bending over using a compass to demonstrate a geometrical formula. He is Euclid. The arches and the pillars would have seen in the ancient ruins in the city of Rome, like the Baths of Caracalla and the Basilica of Maxentius. And you can spot Raphael in this painting too. He's at the bottom right looking at us. Now turn your attention to the opposite wall, to the fresco known as La Disputa. As if to underline the idea that ancient philosophy and Christian thinking could coexist. Raphael painted La Disputa directly facing the school of Athens. Christ and the saints floating atop the clouds in heaven overseeing a pantheon of great thinkers on earth. The crowd in the scene is discussing the nature of Eucharist, the communion wafer there. It is standing on the altar in the very center of the painting. In Christian thought, the communion wafer miraculously becomes the blood of Christ, bringing a little bit of heaven into the material world. So Raphael's painting also connects heaven and earth. The last of the Raphael rooms is the Stanza del Incendio del Borgo, which means the Room of Fire of Borgo. The frescoes depicts events from the lives of Pope Leo III and Leo IV. As we enter on the right, it's the justification of Leo III. On December 23, 800 AD, Pope Leo III took an oath of purification concerning charges brought against him by the nephew of his predecessor, Pope Hadrian. Now turn left. It's the coronation of Charles the Great by Leo III, which took place in St. Peter's Basilica on Christmas night in the year 800, which forms the foundation of the Holy Roman Empire. In the next painting, we see the fire in the Borgo district of Rome, which broke in 847. The area was the neighborhood of St. Peter's Basilica. According to Labour Pontifical, Pope Leo IV miraculously extinguished the fire, thus saving the church and the people. And the last fresco illustrates the Battle of Ostia, which took place in 849. The troops of Leo IV can be seen celebrating the victory over Saracens at Ostia. The painting also refers to the crusade against the infidels, encouraged by Pope Leo X. We leave the Raphael rooms and head towards the Sistine Chapel. On our way, we can see the apartments of Borgia and the collection of contemporary art. The apartment of Borgia is named after its first tenant, Pope Alexander VI, who was Rodrigo Borgia. The apartment is made up of six rooms and have art from 12th to 18th century.
Contemporary art collection was opened to the public by Pope Paul VI on 23rd June 1973. It now holds more than 8,000 works, of which 400 of these are in display. The collection has works done by international masters and major Italian artists. Now we are entering the Sistine Chapel. There are other collections displayed in other galleries which are accessible after the Sistine Chapel, which I will tour in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to find my next video.